Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started on this uh, Mopar water neck job I'm going to do for my cousin Alex over at the gas tap. So I showed this in a previous video, but we'll go ahead and recap you on what we're going to do because we're going to get started on it now. This is the actual water neck that fits Alex's engine right here, a uh, Magnum 360. So the thermostat fits right in there. This is the style and shape that he actually needs for the application. He needs a 90 degree elbow and this is one that he, I don't know, I know that this is for a Chevrolet but he used this during the mock-up and when he first fired off the engine. I believe he got it to work uh, so this was just a temporary solution just to get the engine fired off. But this flange is different right here and it fits a different thermostat so what he's wanting me to do is make the straight water neck look just like this uh, 90. So what we're going to do is sacrifice this piece right here. This is all aluminum by the way. So we're going to end up cutting this water neck here, this elbow, cutting it. We're going to cut this one off here as well and then we're going to weld the elbow to the, uh, the silver colored water neck there. All right. So lots of different ways you can do this and again this is even something that you can buy off the shelf that's commercially available. But you know, with uh, me and Alex being tight our whole life, you know, I always try to help them out whenever I can. I got a machine shop here that I can do a job like this and uh, help, you know, him save a few bucks on the uh, on this uh, budget build that he's been working on. So the height of it needs to be the same as this is sitting here, just like so. All right. So same height. And which is approximately, let me see if I can get it crossed here. I think it was right around, um, it's right around two and three quarters on the, uh, the total height right there. All right. So what we'll do is just go ahead and mark this one off right here at the top of this radius. And this is just cast in there like that. So we'll just cut it off right there. It does get a little thin right in there. So I don't want to remove all this all the way down to the flange. We're going to keep it up there. So we'll mark this, or we'll just cut it right there. But we're going to mark the elbow here where it needs to be. I already uh, practiced with it right there just so that we can kind of see where it's, where it's going to be. So we'll put a scribe line on it right there. And then once we set this on top there, it should be the same height as it, as it is right now. So we'll lay this out. And then I'm going to have a little fun and actually use the mill machine to uh, cut these two parts off versus using a grinder that's kind of a boring and uh, not too precision way to do it so we're going to have a little fun with it and use our machines in here and get it cut and then we'll go over there to the welding positioner and we'll weld this guy back on there or weld it onto this one and see if we can get this accomplished for alex all right so let's get started on it all right so we'll use our surface plate here and i've got this steric height gauge burning your height gauge and what i have done is go ahead and just i've got it set to uh, right at the very top of that radius area of the uh, the water neck there. All right, so we've got that adjustment where we need. All right, we'll move this off out of the way and then what we'll do, we'll bring the uh, 90 degree elbow over here. And this is where that uh, scribe line that I had already marked off just to kind of show you. So we've got a nice sharp point on the uh, the end of the height gauge there. And we'll just go ahead and just go around it just like this and just scribe us a line. And this is going to be for a uh, visual reference when we set it up in the mill to cut it. We'll line up our cutter right on the edge of this uh, scribe line and uh, hopefully get the job done. So. Looking pretty good right about there. Okay, so you can see we've got a nice line all the way around it there. So now we just need to go set up in the mill. I'm going to use the horizontal to do this, by the way. We'll use a horizontal cutter and uh, cut it. So, and I'm planning on mounting it just like this right here, okay, so that it can pull it up tight. And I may have to actually face a little bit off of this flange probably face a little bit of this off first so that I know when I pull it up it's going to be uh, pulled up real tight against the face of the elbow and not the flange because I don't want this thing trying to move and spin in the middle of a cut. 
You can see we're real close to the face of the flange there. But I think we're going to have just enough room to get in there and uh, get this done. Here's one little small example of how you could use this surface gauge, but not just this surface gauge, any gauge. If you want to transfer a location or a measurement from one part over to another part, like this little block, this is just a sample. We've got some dicom on there. I've got the scriber lined up exactly on that scribe mark there on that water neck. Okay. So we've got that position and you can take something over here like this. Scribe a line on there. Just like that. That's the same height location on the sample block as it is over here on the part. They match up. So just one little small example. Here's the setup that I'm talking about we're going to do to uh, hold it uh, to be able to get in there with our saw blade and cut that. And I'm definitely going to have to uh, mill a little bit off the face of this in order to hold it because you can see that even with it snugged up there, this can rotate. Um, but, you know, when this is installed with the thermostat in there, everything pulls down nice and tight. So we're, this is not a needed part anymore, so we're sacrificing all this. So we'll probably just go to the, uh, the six jaw chuck, face a little bit off that so we can pull this down nice and tight. And we'll just clamp it on the mill table, run across here with our horizontal saw and cut it off. That's the plan anyway, hopefully it'll work. So my six jaw plan isn't gonna work because it wouldn't close down far enough. So we're gonna use my little uh, buck three jaw chuck because that'll that'll work there. I'm getting this indicated into the four jaw here on the Monarch. So this was dad's chuck and uh, several years back at Motion, I had, uh, what I did is I just machined an arbor for it. Let me show you. I just took a piece of stock, machined it so that this threaded onto it right there. And then so you can just put this in any chuck you want and then have a smaller capacity three jaw chuck there. All right, so I haven't indicated it yet. I was just going to take you through some of the motions on what to do. I just put a piece of round bar in there. Doesn't have to be uh, dead nuts accurate, but just put a piece of round bar in there and then just indicate it like you would any other piece of material. I'm just getting the chuck running true. And then once I do, we'll be able to chuck that two bolt flange in there and just do a little facing on it like I was uh, showing you that we need to do. All right, so. This is coming in pretty close. All right, that's a half a thousand, so that's plenty close enough. So we got a nice three jaw that's running true. And I'll uh, go ahead and we'll take this piece out so I can show you what I'm talking about here. Come on now. I didn't know I tightened up that much. That's just a just a piece of bar stock there to use. All right, so here's our two bolt flange. We need to take, you know, maybe ten thousand or so off the face of that. Should have hopefully it's nice and parallel. But what we'll do is just go ahead and close up our three jaw there, just like that. And now we can chuck that bore in there, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure it's pushed up flat against the uh, jaws. And there it is. Quick, simple way that we can face this off. A lot longer to set the thing up than it's going to take just to cut it. We're ready to make our cut on this flange here. We've already got it touched off and you can see it's actually touching pretty darn even on both sides of the flange there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get this thing cut. I'm just going to take one pass across there. I'm going to feed this in ten thousandths. face it back. We're just using a high speed tool bit here. That should be all the clearance we need to get that elbow to uh, clamp up tightly. 
All right. We'll go ahead and move on to our next setup now. All right, we're going to do a little fit up right here, but I think we're going to have to modify this other face as well because I don't think I'm going to have enough clearance for the cutter in order to be able to cut the, um, the scribe line where I want it. Now, there's no rocket science here. There's no exact measurements that have to be, but I'm just trying to uh, make things as close as what we had uh, talked about where they needed to be as far as the height goes. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let me go ahead and get it clamped up. I think our uh, facing worked out good. I can see the flange pulling up. Give it just enough clearance there to pull that elbow up nice and tight there. Okay, so now you can see where our scribe line is. And, and so I want to use a cutter to come through there. So I already found a cutter. It's this guy right here. I've got a brand new made in Poland slitting saw here, high speed steel. And what I want to do is come in there like this and cut it. And it's almost to that scribe line right there. Almost there. So really I need to come in to this area where the flange is right now to make it exact. So what I'm going to do is just take this back to the three jaw and then we'll do the same thing. We'll face off this side a little bit and then I'm probably going to have to face the bolts off a little bit as well because they're almost flush to the end right there. And then that'll give us enough clearance so that I, I'll probably just end up having the saw blade just right up next to this face whenever we do our cutting and it should um, give us right there where we want to be. I think I'm going to take a sixteenth off of it. That should give us the clearance that I need for the cutter there. So what I'll do is chuck the bolts up and just do the same thing. We'll take a sixteenth off the end of those. I'm going to use a uh, brazed on tool there. It's one of my Micro 100 tool bits. I want to take a sixteenth. I'm just going to try to cut it all at the same time. Just coming here and let me set a zero on my indicator. Let's just move it in just like that. I'm just looking at my indicator over here. 65 thousandths. Face it back. And it should be good right there. It doesn't even feel sharp on the edge. So let's just go ahead and put the other one in here and do the same thing. Just hand feeding it in to the part here. 65, face it back. All right. Well, I think this might give us what we need now to clamp our part in there. So let's go bolt it up and see. All right. So yeah, looks like that's going to give us plenty of clearance there for our 1 8 cutter to come in right next to this flange and cut it and we'll, we'll be able to line it up on our scribe line and not be getting into this or the bolts there. Alright, so there we are. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the KNT. I'll start getting it ready and I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to start making a cut on this thing. Get the angle plate clamped up here to the mill table, tightened down. I want to show you how it's squared up. Instead of running an indicator across, uh, this thing mics out nice and true, you know, parallel top of the angle plate to the face here. So I just squared up to the uh, column ways of the machine. I got this parallel here and pushed it all the way back square, tighten up the two flange nuts, and that's going to be as close as we need it to be right there. I'm going to turn the machine on. We're going to get the cutter 
lined up by sight right where, the, where that scribe line is. I'm real close now, so I just want to come up and start cutting and taking the paint off, and then we'll adjust the table over. Looks like the cutter's got a slight amount of weevil wobble to it. That's on a taper, so I need to go in a little further. Looks like I've got it right about where I need it. Okay, it's looking pretty good right there. We're ready to go ahead and make our cut. We've got everything set. I am going to run mist coolant, so you'll see that on there. And uh, as far as speed, we're running right around 100 surface feet a minute, probably just a little under that actually. But uh, that'll put you close there. And we're just going to feed it nice and even across there, uh, nothing too fast. Looks like our little fixture worked. It did a good job of cutting that. That is a super razor sharp, brand new uh, saw blade there and it cut through that aluminum like nothing. Worked pretty good. I'm gonna take this out and clean everything up and we're gonna switch over to our uh, straight water neck and, and get that one cut off next. Okay, we got the straight one set in there, clamped in tight. And so the only thing we got to do is we need to move our Y axis that way 125 thousandths the thickness of the blade because this time we're going to be cutting on this side of the part. If I was to cut it right now we're actually going to be cutting into this radius right there. So we need to go back 125, go to our digital readout, set to zero, over 125 the width of the cutter right there. All right. We'll fire it up and make our second cut now.
That worked out real good too. I kicked the feet up on that one, so that's why it cut faster there. And you can see it was a little thinner. But we got plenty of plenty of uh, meat right there that we can weld into whenever we put the uh, elbow on there. So there we go. I'm gonna take it out, clean this mill up, and then we'll move on to our next phase, which is gonna be uh, welding. I wanted to show you what it looks like, you know, with our parts cut there. So there's our there's our flange cut. I still got to clean it. We've also got to uh, get all the paint off these parts too as well. So I, I was going to do that before we get the welding. So there we go. It actually looks pretty good just sitting on there like that. Got a nice flat cut. I may do a, I'll probably do a little bevel right around that. Just do that by hand with a grinder. You can see we got some thickness there. This is thicker than this right here. So I got to be careful about that. So we may do some bevel in there on this to remove some of that thickness there. But it looks good, like it's going to fit up good. And it's all working out. So next phase, cleaning it, get it prepped. And then we'll go to the uh, positioner, start getting it welded.